Hello everyone, I'm Gareth Math974 here again today and welcome to another Valve Hammer tutorial. This time around I'm going to demonstrate how you can use a tool called crowbar.exe to decompile and then recompile Half-Life 2 beta models to work in retail Half-Life 2 or the retail source engine for that matter. So you can't just copy and paste Half-Life 2 beta models into retail Half-Life 2. In this case, I'm going to demonstrate this by using the light stalk, which is from Half-Life 1. And if you do this and you try to load up the hammer editor, then if the map has the offending model, in this case the light stalk, or you try to use the model browser and it finds the light stalk, then it's going to cause the hammer editor to crash because there's some version number incompatibility. But for stuff like materials, sounds, scripts, CFG files and all that sort of stuff, yeah, you can just copy and paste that from Half-Life 2 Beta into Retail Half-Life 2. It's just the models that are problematic. So as I mentioned, you can use a tool called crowbar.exe. I'll leave a link in the description down below to the Steam community group for Crowbar. So what they say here is that the Steam community group page is not going to change but the download link will. So whenever referencing the crowbar tool, always link to the Steam community group and not the actual download link because the download link can change with an updated version. This kind of applies to me because I did already do this tutorial a couple of weeks back, but I used a 0.58 version of crowbar.exe. And as it turns out, the most recent version is 0.71. So I ended up missing out on quite a few versions since I only downloaded crowbar.exe for my Air Exchange Retail Mod project, which I did the majority of the work for a couple years ago, and 0.58 was the most recent version at that point in time. But now we have 0.71, a lot of the issues I would have mentioned in this old tutorial that you're not going to be able to watch because it had outdated information in it, it has been fixed in 0.71, so that's a good thing. So when you load it into crowbar.exe, you will see a whole bunch of tabs at the top. I recommend that you at least take a look at the setup games tab first. That way you can just see the information that's contained within it. So you can see the name of the game, the engine it's using, uh, the .exe file, the gameinfo.txt file, the studio mdl.exe file and stuff like that. You just want to make sure that all of the stuff there is perfect which it should be. There's other neat features such as the unpack tab, which allows you to open up .vpk and even Gary's mod edition files. And also a tab to publish your own stuff to games like Black Mesa or Gary's mod or Left 4 Dead 2, for example. So I like that. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're only interested in the decompile and compile tabs. So in the decompile tab, this is where you want to select your MDL input as a file. In this case, I'm using the light stalk from Half-Life 2 Beta. So you want to navigate to that install, go HL2 models, and then select the model you want from there. And then in my case, I'm outputting it to a work folder, which is just going into my documents and into a new folder called light stalk. There's plenty of check marks along the way. So if you want a QC file or groups into QCI files, if you have dollar sign texture group, different skins basically, um, or define bones for view models or mixed case for keywords for the source engine or non-valve UV conversion for the gold source engine. There's all different check marks that you can tick or untick. So you can pretty much use what I use here. It's pretty much what you would use for most source models. Though you might want to tick include dollar sign defined bones for view models if that is what you're going to decompile and then recompile. So what you should see is if you decompile the model, you should check to see if there's any problems. Hopefully there aren't. But then it decompiles the model into a .qc file that exists in the work folder that you specified. So in my case, if I go to documents and light stalk, then there's going to be a lightstalk.qc file there which you can open up and look into. I would go on a whim and say if there's any LOD tags or anything in there talking about references to an LOD file, then I would remove those because historically for me they caused problems rather than solutions. So I would just get rid of that stuff quite frankly, but 
Maybe since Crowbar is now at 0.71, that stuff works. I don't know. But then if you go to the Compile tab, then you select the .qc file that's created from the Decompile tab, and then you can output it to wherever you want to. In my case, it's going to my Games Models folder. So the game in question is Half-Life 2. So it's going to Half-Life 2 HL2 Models. Uh, you can write the log to a file, have no P4, uh, have a verbose output, for example. And then if you're happy with all of these settings, you just click on Compile and check for any errors. In my case, everything just compiles properly, though you do want to check if there's any errors it would tell you. For instance, LOD stuff, or for the case of Captain Vance, there's, I think, a .vta file it tries to find, but it doesn't exist. So perhaps that's an issue with the decompile process. But generally, for most models, you don't need to worry about this. You just click decompile, then load in the .qc file from the decompile tab in the compile tab, and then compile the .qc file into a model that can be used in the source engine. So now if you navigate to Half-Life 2 HL2 models, then you should see Lightstalk in there along with all of the other necessary files. However, it will have missing textures since it is a Half-Life 2 beta model. So what you can do is open up Lightstalk.mdl in something like Notepad, and even though there's a lot of gibberish in there, you can see tangible strings at the bottom. And in this case, you see light size and models slash light stalk. This refers to the materials that the model uses. And even in the .qc file, you end up seeing the materials folder directory that you want to use for that model. So because this is a fairly easy case, all you want to do is go to your Half-Life 2 beta directory, go into HL2 materials models find the light stalk folder and then inside the light stalk folder you should see a texture called light side and you can just copy the light stalk folder out of half-life 2 beta and then paste that into the materials models directory in half-life 2. so now you can go ahead and load the hammer editor for half-life 2 create something like a prop dynamic and you should be able to type in light stalk in the search bar and basically be able to load up the Lightstalk model. And you don't get any crashes, which is beautiful. Now, one of the problems I would have had with the old version of Crowbar is that certain body groups don't work for some models, like the Combine Guard or the Female Assassin. And the Combine Guard has broken AI in the sense that it couldn't walk. I'm fairly sure that was down to Crowbar and the decompile and recompile phase and it just not doing stuff properly, but... It works now, so I could show footage from Air Exchange Retail where you see the Combine Guard walking around as it's supposed to, the female assassin running around and shooting at the player as she's supposed to. But then additionally, if you kill the female assassin, then the body group gets set to the female assassin with no pistols, which is pretty good. So yeah, that's about the tutorial. I think that's all of the steps. It's decompile in crowbar.exe. That gives you a .qc file. You go into the compile tab and then feed in the .qc file that you would have generated from the decompile section. Then that goes to wherever you want it to go to. And then you just need to copy over the appropriate materials, models, folder and files. And then you can be able to use Half-Life 2 beta models in the retail source engine. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I'm trying this slightly differently, but hopefully you found it enjoyable. Please let me know what you think and I hope that this works for you. So yeah, take care of there. See you next time.